Welcome to Machetes 3, uh, third in my video series, an educational series discussing uh, uh, that most versatile and inexpensive outdoor blade, the machete. Now in this video, I'm just going to go over the basic, uh, the most popular tip and body designs, just uh, the basic terminology. You might have heard many different terms, uh, Latin machete, bolo machete, panga, parang. You might be wondering, well, what is the difference between all these designs? I'm going to go over uh, the most popular tip and body designs. Now, you know, you should be able to tell some of these are made as choppers. They can basically do what a camp axe could do. And some of these are made as what you could call slashers, uh, clearing trails, soft vegetation, and saplings. Now remember, the terminology is not standardized, okay? Different areas of the world might use different terms. All right, so this is just going to be in general. It's not going to be, uh, you know, like a science class. All right, the first machete on the left, classic Latin-style machete probably the most easily recognized design around the world as what people think of as a machete. Next to that is a bolo. The term bolo I've actually seen applied to so many different shapes, but it's often applied to uh, this shape right here you see on the Outback Machete by Condor. Uh, bolos tend to be flared out, and the designs tend to be oriented uh, towards strong chopping. Right, and I've reviewed that blade. Next to, to the bolo, you have a condor bush cutlass. Now, a cutlass machete is generally a machete that's based after uh, the design of saber-type swords. There are also smaller cutlasses. Uh, K-Bar has one. It's basically a small but heavy chopping design. So, again, cutlass seems to be applied to uh, several different designs. Now this machete is a spear point machete, and you can see the tip. It's a symmetrical uh, spear point tip, and this one is also double edged. This type of uh, tip design is a panga. You see how the uh, tip trails quite a bit, right? And it is a slasher, you know, a trail clearer. But then uh, the tip in that sharpened portion has other uses. All right, this is what's called a topanga. According to my research, this design actually originates in Africa. You can see how much metal is maintained towards the end, so it is oriented towards a heavier chopping. Next to the Topanga, there is a Kukri or Kukari machete, and next to that you see an Enep. Notice they are very similar. They're recurved designs with the bellies put forward for strong chopping, but the tips are different. The ENAP has a clip point tip. Now this was a $25 machete. Uh, the edge has been reprofiled, all right, to you know to make it much more effective, let's say. But Kukri's from Nepal, awesome. And here you see the subtle differences between ENAP and Kukri. Basically, it's about you know the ENAP. You can see it has a, a clip point tip. Now this is an awesome uh, Iranian tie ENAP. The edge on that. You can see the geometry of that edge, incredibly strong. Right, next to the ENEP, we have a coconut machete. Uh, I'm not sure if it has any other English names. I know it does have name Thai names, but it is used mostly uh, for opening coconuts, so I would call it, you know, I just call it a coconut machete. Next to that, you have a Martindale crocodile golock. And next to that, you have a parang from Village Parang from Condor. You can see the difference and the similarities. The parang, it is swept back a bit compared to the golok, but basically they're good choppers because they are heavier uh, towards the end. Next to that, the classic Filipino barong. That's a Condor barong. Similar to a spear point, but the edge begins curving back towards the tip a lot earlier than on a spear point. All right, those are two tie machetes. Any machete that's mounted on a pole is a pole machete. Now, the first one is a variation of sickle-type machetes, 
The second one is what's called a Dao type machete based after the uh, Chinese sword with a similar shape. As you can see, it's a beautiful piece as well, custom wrap on that. And that sickle type machete, you know, the material it cuts is going to be forced into that recurve and it's going to force the cut. It's like a scythe. And again, uh, those edges, impressive. This type of machete is uh, for harvesting sugar cane, so it's a cane machete. Now, this was a cheaper cold steel model. And again, uh, the edge had to actually be re reprofiled and the bevel taken back, but these are heavy choppers. Next to the cane machete, this is a kuma machete, sometimes called a, uh, a crossbill or a billhook machete. You can see it's kind of like a panga, but sharpened on the other side. Same idea as the other recurve and sickle designs, it forces material into that sweet spot. Now next to that is the hawk shetty. I have this machete here to symbolize all the new or one-of-a-kind designs which don't fit into the traditional categories, you know, like Cold Steel has like a Tanto machete and so forth. So just be aware that there are many, many designs that might not be very popular and they might not fit in to established categories. All right, so the hawk shetty. All right, there you see all the different tips. You know, it's almost like biology or evolution. You can see all the variations. I do think this is pretty fascinating, you know, at least if you're a, a blade nerd, which hopefully you are, if you're tuning into this, uh, this orgy of uh, blade porn here. All right, but I do hope you learned something. And stay tuned for Machetes 4, where I'm going to show... Um, budget machetes. I'm going to show many machetes $20 or less.